We are now live in this week's Hangout with Dijon SEO. We're doing live SEO troubleshooting. What I'll do next is I will uh, introduce our SEO guru, Martin Reed, who is, who's going to do our first session. Martin, over to you. Thanks, Dan, for the uh, introduction. So, hey, everyone, how are you going? Uh, my name is Martin Reed. I'm a technical SEO strategist with Dijon SEO. Uh, so, what we're going to do today is uh, first cover a scenario that we encountered a couple of weeks ago uh, to do with a website that stopped ranking out of the blue. And we'll just cover some of the, uh, the process that we use to, to troubleshoot the problem uh, and uh, eventually overcome it. And then we're going to look at a couple of websites that have been submitted during the week. Um, we've put down a couple of notes and we also invite uh, the, the guests in the hangout today if they have any feedback to contribute to. So let's get started with this website. Uh, we were alerted to a website. Uh, someone's got their microphone unmuted. Thanks, Dan. So we were alerted to a website that stopped ranking a couple of weeks ago uh, out of the blue. Uh, it wasn't ranking for any of the keywords that we were targeting, and it wasn't ranking for its brand name either. So this is something that, that stumped us. We, uh, I think, initially went into a little bit of panic mode, thinking you know the worst had happened, and we started trying to, to troubleshoot what the problem might be. So we started by checking that the website was still accessible, chucked it into, uh, into Chrome, and of course it loaded. We checked that the website was loaded, uh, was indexed rather, and it, it was. We jumped into Google Webmaster Tools. We had a look at the index status, and that looked normal. We looked at the malware. That was fine as well. We had a look at the blocked URL page, and, and that reported no problems as well. And the fetches Googlebot was successful. So this had us scratching our, our heads uh, as to what the problem could be. Uh, coming from a technical background, I, I thought that maybe there was a, a technical problem with the website. So I, I checked that the domain hadn't expired and it was fine. I checked that there weren't any DNS issues or server issues. That was all fine as well. We reached out to the hosting company to make sure that Googlebot hadn't been blocked and, and that was fine as well. Uh, we, we checked other websites on the same IP address and we even uh, spoofed uh, our user agents to see whether the website loaded uh, something else when uh, we accessed the website as Googlebot and it all came up with uh, with no problems at all. So this had us scratching our heads and we started looking through Webmaster Tools again just to see what the problem might be and sitting on the dashboard page right in front of us was a, uh, a big scary warning. Let me just share my screen and I'll show you what that was. On the site error page, it reported that the robots.txt file was inaccessible. Funnily enough, this message appears on the dashboard as soon as you log into the website, and it was the last thing we looked at. I've no idea how we missed it. But of course, the first thing we did was check to see whether the robots file was there, whether it was accessible. We had no problems at all. It was, uh, it was really strange. We, uh, we clicked on the link, and it, uh, on, on the uh, Google Webmaster Tools page, and it took us to a help document that told us, if your robots.txt file exists but is unreachable, we'll postpone our crawl rather than risk disallowing or risk crawling disallowed URLs. So this explained to us why the, the website wasn't ranking anymore, but not so much the how. So as I said, we, we checked the blocked pages in, in Webmaster Tools, the blocked URLs. There were no problems there. We had a look at the fetches Googlebot and tried to fetch the Googlebot, uh, tried to fetch the robots file, no problems as well. So uh, here's the, the blocked URL page, 200 success, no problems at all. We did a fetches Googlebot, it's the third one down on that page, and that was, that was accessed as well. And we had no idea what uh, the actual cause of the problem was. So going back to the Webmaster Tools uh, help website, we, we found another bit of information and it states that you don't need a robots.txt file if your site or if you intend to, let me actually read what it says. You need a robots.txt file only if your site includes content that you don't want search engines to index. So if we go back to the uh, blocked URL uh, page, we can see that everything was allowed. So what we did was we removed the, the robots.txt file. 
simply removed it, it's it's now returning a 404 error. So as you can see uh, back on the uh, fetches Google what page, we we tried crawling uh, the the robots file. It returned not found. So that was the desired result. And then we crawled the home page and submitted it back into the index just to give it a bit of a, a nudge. And a couple of days later, the website was ranking again for its brand name and for the keywords that we were targeting. So we're still not entirely sure what's happened, why um, why Google had problems accessing the robots txt file in the first instance. We had a look at the website. There were no changes made to the robots file, to the HD access file, uh, or to any of the other CMS files uh, for that matter since uh, earlier this year. And there was nothing in the error log of the website to indicate any problems. So this one's had us scratching our heads a little bit, but um, yeah, at the end of the day, we were able to remove that robots.txt file and within a couple of days, we'll back ranking uh, in, in Google's search results. So that was the ideal outcome. And I'll just finish with a, a little screenshot here of the crawl stats for the website. So you can see it flatlines towards the end of August. And uh, as soon as Google's able to uh, crawl that website again, you can see a bit of a spike as it's made its way back through the website. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether any of the other participants in the Hangout have had any other uh, interesting scenarios like that that they'd like to share. <laughs> How sure are you that, that removing the robot stacks caused the reappearance? Uh, well, realistically, it was the only thing that we uh, we did to the website. We found no other problems. Uh, the website, as far as we're aware, wasn't penalized. We submitted no re-inclusion requests. Uh, the screenshots indicated that the, the specific problem was the robots file wasn't accessible. Um, perhaps we did do something along the process that, uh, that's maybe done something on Google's end to, uh, I don't know, reset uh, the, the robot status. But yeah, the, the primary thing or the key thing that we did on our end was to remove the robots file and just resubmit that website to get Google visiting it again. And as soon as we did that, we saw on the crawl errors page, the uh, number of times that it encountered problems uh, stopped straight away. So perhaps perhaps there was a, another factor at play, but uh, yeah, this, this seems to be, uh, well, th this is what we've done to Get it, uh, get it. You, you, you don't dare to put it back again, the robot's text. <laughs> well, uh, our, our client has actually gone back and added a, <laughs> uh, a similar one. So um, uh, what's more is they've actually added it with invalid syntax in there. So luckily Google hasn't had a problem with that. They added this uh, about a week or so ago. But um, yeah, we haven't had a reoccurrence and hopefully we, we won't either. We have instructed the client to remove it straight away, though. We had some questions on the forum also about uh, the message uh, about the robots text uh, end of August, uh, starts of September. So it could also be a glitch in, uh, in Webmaster tools, robots text uh, interpretations or something like that. Because it's strange that, that it doesn't read uh, or accept an empty robots text. Uh, so. Yeah, it was strange. It, it wasn't a empty uh, robots file, so there was a little bit of text in there, but it, it wasn't sort of, uh, I suppose, invalid text or it wasn't something that you'd expect to cause any problems. So mm -hmm. I, have, I have a similar um, chunk of text in my robots.txt file with, without any problems, and many other websites do as, as well. So yeah, we're not too sure uh, whether the problem was to do with the content, or perhaps there was um, some type of problem uh, with on, on Google's end trying to crawl that robots file, but completely removing it, and the, uh, the 404 HTTP response uh, seems to have, uh, will either stop the problem, or given it enough of a uh, nudge to uh, to get it indexed again. Okay. Okay. So what we might do now is jump into the first website that we're going to uh, review this evening. 
so thanks to all the people who have submitted their websites. We had submissions through uh, Google+, Plus, through Facebook. We've had a couple of emails as well. So we've picked three that we're going to go through today. Uh, fortunately, we can't go through all of them. Uh, we are planning on doing these Hangouts on a regular basis, so hopefully next week we'll be able to cover some of the ones that we've missed. Uh, and in some cases as well, uh, the websites submitted were, were in pretty good shape and there's there's not going to be too much uh, gained by reviewing them. Uh, in any case, uh, I'll endeavour to, to be in touch in the next couple of days to, to people who we've covered today and to some of the people that we may not cover in the future just to, uh, to let them know uh, my thoughts because uh, each of the websites submitted have been reviewed. So the very first website we're going to look at today uh, was submitted by Nick Bruges. My apologies if I've pronounced your name incorrectly. And the website is uh, nicholasbruges.com.au. Let me see if I can fix my screen sharing so it's not showing the whole thing. Much better. Okay, so Nicholas is a web designer based in Brisbane, so we're very happy to be able to uh, submit some feedback for a uh, uh, for a local. Uh, it seems like he's submitted, uh, he's uh, updated his website in the last couple of uh, weeks, so he's got a, a nice looking website at the moment. Um, there are still some older pages still next in Google, but uh, other than that, there seems to have been a smooth transition to the new website. So URLs appear to be the same, and the content uh, has changed a little bit, but um, as I said, there don't seem to be any, any problems at all. Now, the first thing that uh, I notice when I look at the website is the massive slider in the middle of the screen, uh, which is a nice touch, but once you try to click on it, nothing happens. You can change the next couple of slides, but you're not actually able to click through. And it, it might just be me, but a lot of people seem to uh, come to a website and not necessarily expect to have uh, everything done on the homepage. They, they sort of expect to be funneled through to a, a more relevant page based on the information that they're trying to find. So when landing on this page, my instinct is if I want to find out more about the web development that he does, is to click through onto onto his web development page, but I can't actually do that. One of the reasons for that is because he doesn't actually have uh, landing pages specifically for these services. So let's jump across over to the services page that he does have. In fact, I've got it open in another tab. Maybe not. Okay, so he's got his uh, services page here. And he's got a list of his services, just a little paragraph covering each of the uh, the areas that he uh, that he covers. What I'd recommend to uh, to Nicholas is to separate these into specific landing pages. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. The first is you're able to provide a bit more information uh, about the service that's, that you're offering. Uh, you can include some case studies. You can include just specific information introducing the, the nature of, of that service. Uh, I suppose the main one for me is Nicholas seems to be targeting small businesses and the majority of small businesses that I work with have no idea what WordPress is. So having a nice little introduction to, to WordPress and the benefits of, of using a CMS in general could be really beneficial. Uh, from a, uh, I suppose, link building point of view or from a um, search engine point of view, you've got a clear landing page targeting uh, the, the type of keyword that you're you're targeting, so Web Design in Brisbane, for example, or um, perhaps Web Hosting Brisbane, and it just makes it a little bit easier to, to get ranking. Uh, at the moment, uh, Nick's homepage uh, ranks reasonably well, but uh, the rest of the website doesn't seem to be ranking um, uh, at all, which is which is a shame. So there's definitely some room to uh, to improve there. Uh, the other thing, it's it's not as specific to this page, but uh, it'll be uh, more specific when he does build out those landing pages, is the H1 on the page at the moment is, is just services on this page. Whereas if you look at the title tag, and to do that we're going to need to look at the source of the page. The title is uh, is broken, first of all. That's, uh, that's something that I didn't notice earlier. Uh, if, we, if we just touch on the title, one of the reasons why I didn't notice it, I'd say, is because there is a, a little bit of JavaScript that makes the title reveal uh, as, it, as it sort of scrolls across. And 
for me personally, it, it's a little bit of a distraction. Uh, it doesn't really add to the uh, the experience either way. And the other thing is, if you if you've got a couple of tabs open and you're just trying to quickly scan through them to see what you're what you're looking for, uh, you might glance at it when it's got SCRV in the title, and uh, it, it doesn't offer any any real value from an SEO point of view because the page does load with the correct or with with a title before it's it's removed. It's not such a uh, a big deal, but uh, I'd, I'd probably suggest removing it. Now, if we do go back to the source of the services page, we can see that the title included hasn't quite formed properly. I'd, I'd say this is an issue with the um, SEO plugin that he's using. So we've got a title here, services, and then without a space, Nicholas Burge, and then Brisbane Web Design, then Nicholas Burge again, then Brisbane Web Design again. So what I'd do is I'd recommend, first of all, fixing that up, but I'd avoid including Brisbane Web Design on each page leave your name, leave Nicholas Burge in place just as a, a bit of branding um, and, and try not to, uh, I suppose, include uh, include that Brisbane Web Design keyword on every single page. That way you can have a clear message on each page. So you've got a Brisbane Web Design, perhaps that's targeted towards your homepage. Uh, you can have your uh, WordPress a design page, clearly saying WordPress Design Brisbane Nicholas Burge, and you're, you're keeping it clean. You're keeping the branding clean, and you're, you're keeping the message uh, on on topic. So you're not going, uh, or you're not sort of cannibalizing your keywords by including uh, particular words on on every single page. Okay. The other thing I've noticed on the website is currently there are two H1s on the page. Uh, what you want to try to do is include all of your heading tags within the content of the page. So at the moment, the uh, the title is an H1. Uh, you'd want to keep that consistent. You want to keep uh, all of your title tags consistent uh, towards the topic of that page. So on this page is uh, on this page, it'd be uh, to do with the services offered, and you'd want to keep all of those headings within the the content as a as a general rule of thumb. Let's just jump back to the home page for a moment. Okay, currently on his home page, he's got, I love to create awesome WordPress powered websites for small businesses as his H1. What I would suggest is if we scroll down a little bit to the, the content of the page, we've got, I'm a freelance WordPress designer and developer based in Brisbane, Australia. And that's currently a H4 tag. And what I'd suggest is creating that as the H1. Uh, the main reason is the the title we have at the top is great for users. It's uh, I suppose it's something that uh, can perhaps confirm why they're at the website. It's it's great. It's relatable to that person clicking through to the website. But from a search point of view, uh, perhaps it doesn't include as as many of the keywords uh, available. Um, so going back to uh, keeping the heading tags within the content, I'd suggest that the content is is really this section here. So I'd, I'd add the H1 to I'm a freelance WordPress designer and I'd avoid using it uh, on other elements of the page. So the latest projects and the pristine cleaning services, Reliance Plumbing, those titles uh, aren't on topic. So I'd, I'd probably uh, avoid using them. When it comes to changing those tags to something else, uh, you'd need to look at CSS styling just to keep that appearance uh, intact the, the way that it currently is. Now, I do like the, the call to action on this page. On the right-hand side, we've got a, uh, a box uh, with that call to action, call me directly. So there's that, that personal touch to it. Um, and you've got the three different options there uh, for, for methods of contact, as well as a link, uh, which could be a little more visible going through to your contact page. What's missing on the services page is that type of call to action. So when you're when you're on this page, you can see, okay, Nicholas is a website designer. That's great. I want to get in touch. I want to I want to talk to them. I want to get a quote. But from this page, there's there's no instant call to action. You've got to look around, and you can see there's a, a hire me in the top right corner. But if you had that form on the uh, on that page on the right hand side, that'd be uh, extremely easy for that user to uh, to approach you to make contact. 
what you might also consider doing is having just a little form on that page to capture some basic information uh, as an alternative to uh, having the, the potential client reach out to you. So if they're able to put in a, a name and a phone number, for example, you can then reach out to them and uh, that may get you a, a couple of extra leads as well. Okay, and the final thing on, on this website is the uh, meta descriptions. So what you want to do uh, is write a meta description for every single page on the website where you're either anticipating search traffic uh, arriving on your website or you're anticipating that page is going to be uh, shared via social media. What you want to avoid doing is just leaving it as is. Uh, if if Google doesn't like the meta description you've provided, for example, it's just going to take a, a meta description from the content. So you may as well uh, make the effort to put in a, a meta description that's going to be uh, appealing for the user to click through. And an appealing description can be a unique selling point. So if you were a e-commerce store that offered free shipping on all orders, you'd want to make sure that free shipping is in that call to action, is in that meta description. And you'd, you'd essentially want to, um, yeah, in, in 156 characters or less, just encourage that person to click through. Uh, give them a reason why they should. If you just leave it up to the first sentence of your, your paragraph, uh, of your content, there's a good chance that, that that content isn't going to be compelling and you might, list, you might miss out on people actually clicking through to the website. So overall, it is a, it is a nice website. It's a clean design. Uh, the transition to this new website seems to be smooth as well. There are some areas that you can improve. But uh, overall, uh, you are in good shape. So uh, keep up the good work and uh, get onto those recommendations. Okay, so that's it uh, from me for now. I'll throw it back over to Dan, who's going to introduce us to our second website. Thanks, Martin. Uh, I've got a fun website, really, really nice. Uh, I had a quick look at it today. Uh, Wind Chimes Australia, they're called. Um, and overall, quite uh, quite well structured and uh, quite nice, good product. Um, they've got even little recordings of the uh, wind chimes in action. So uh, not too much wrong with it, but um, a, a prime example where a little bit of SEO could make a world of difference uh, for these people. So let's get straight into it. I'll share my screen so you guys can have a look. So this is um, the site here. Now the first problem that um, I run into was, okay, so that's the URL there. Uh, for those who can't read, if it's too small, it's uh, basically windchimesaustralia.com.au. Now in the second tab, I also opened the same website with www.windchimesaustralia.com.au and I opened another tab, www.windchimesaustralia.com.au forward slash index.php. Classic. So, like uh, Thomas said, basically we've got um, three URLs for one canonical version of the page. So, uh, my recommendation is really, really simple. Um, implement um, uh, rel equals uh, canonical and or uh, 301 these pages over to your um, uh, main homepage URL. How to decide which one it is and which one it isn't um, is very easy because um, you can do a simple search for your brand name in Google and just pick the version that Google already has picked themselves. So as you can see here, Google selected the www version. so don't go against that. Um, if they already picked that, then I guess you continue with that as well. Make sure that this version is also included in your email signatures and um, any documents that you're creating. So try to keep that consistent. Um, and final tip, if you go into your webmaster tools um, in the uh, settings section, uh, for, for Australian users you won't be able to specify the uh, uh, geo target, but you will be able to pick uh, which canonical uh, URL you want to be your website. So in your case you want to switch to the www and save those settings. If you don't have the Google Webmaster tools enabled, then you should anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to go flip to some of the screenshots I've made about this website. Okay, so uh, just in no particular order, I noticed uh, on this uh, uh, 
icon here on this uh, little promo image um, that there's a lot of um, alt text. Alt text is great to describe images, but I, I would start to think that this is a little bit almost going too far. Uh, generally what I do is I try to describe the image to the best of my ability and maybe if there's any text to include that text in there. Um, uh, you know, like for example, the words overseas orders get a discount. That that word is not really in the images. You know, it's not really a big problem, but uh, it probably uh, it probably shouldn't be there. Okay. Uh, next thing I picked is not a problem. It's something that you're doing really well. So I should point that out as well. Um, on your homepage, you you have all these different uh, uh, products. Now, um, linking internally, you're not using you know your click here and read more. You're actually using the the name of the product to link to that page. That's really good. Okay, and uh, one little uh, gem I guess I found was I might zoom in on this one a little bit so everyone can see it a bit more clearly. Okay, so you've got a PDF uploaded um, on your website, um, and you are actually through the PDF linking back to your site. That's really really great. I, I like to see that. A lot of webmasters upload various PDF material and they forget to link back to their website because PDF often get distributed and shared with users um, and uh, if they re-upload it on their website you're not getting that link so that's really a good thing that you've done there. Um, a small tip I have for you with your um, uh, search results. See for example this is your competitor uh, that's eBay um, and there's another competitor there. Notice how their um, titles are really neat and um, their descriptions are really neat. They're well written, concise, and they're actually cut off at, at some point on their own. Um, now, whereas if, if we have a look at um, this one here, which is your example, the, the title is a little bit too long, a little bit messy. This will impact the click-through rate. Um, it actually gets cut off, as you can see here, because it's, got too, it's too wide, too many characters, too, much, too, much, too many pixels in length. So um, another thing is, um, I would probably put a little bit of work into the actual meta description because even if you, if you, even if your number three result, you could still, so to speak, outrank the first result by getting more clicks if your description is more interesting. So I would put all my call to action, all my, you know, how you better, you know. So these guys, these guys using handcrafted and guaranteed for three years, uh, that's telling me something. Um, what are you saying? So you're saying high quality handcrafted. You know, it's a little bit um, structured. So I pretended to be a user, and I went through this, and I didn't quite um, enjoy this description as this one. Plus, this one got truncated as well. So working with this, um, I guess, would uh, make a little bit of difference to you, towards your website. We've actually uh, built a um, a tool that you can um, look for. It's called um, SERP Preview. So if you go to this page, maybe Martin can share on our wall, um, you can basically type in your website's uh, um, title, you know, its description and URL, and it'll give you the visualization of how this, uh, how this would look like. So I can go into the uh, source code here and pick your title from this list and also pick your meta description. By the way, you've got meta keywords in there. That doesn't hurt at all, so no problem, but um, they're not actually helping you rank because Google doesn't look at those. Okay, so in the description field, we've got a, a fair amount in there. Um, I guess recommended uh, is somewhere around 150. You've got a little bit too much in there, and same thing is uh, happening for the for the title there. Now. One final thing is I guess we should take your URL and put it in here. Let's say somebody typed in um, wind chimes, so we get these terms bolded in the um, in the snippet. Now that's that's how it looks like at the moment, right? I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, yeah, just a little bit messy. What if we had what if we had wind chimes Australia in there? And we had high quality, you know, capitalization um, can sometimes confuse people. So I would avoid uh, creating it that way. I'd probably just have a normal flowing 
natural sentence like that. Okay, high quality handcrafted wind uh, wind chimes for sale. Uh, maybe you can start a new sentence. Australia wide fast delivery. Um, maybe put your phone number at the end, or you know some special, just to create that uh, interest. And this description now looks a lot more neat, a lot neater, and a lot easier to read and uh, more enticing to click. A lot of people don't realize your your uh, search results are much like your um, ads in Google. People click uh, based on the content of the SERP snippet. Okay, enough about that one. Let's see if we've got any others. Ah, this is a soft signal, I guess. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit on that one. Soft signal, but uh, it is something that search engines look at as well, especially because uh, recently I read that they do use um, you know, a year, and if your website is um, uh, outdated, it seems to represent a small, uh, a small signal in uh, how fresh uh, your website is. I've, I think if you update your content regularly, it's not so much a big deal. But this is a really easy thing to fix. So I would update your year just to give that additional quality signal to search engines. Okay, that's the notes I had uh, here. I've got a few um, few other um, things to mention about this uh, um, about this website. Um, one is that uh, you don't actually have um, you don't actually have a blog, and um, having a blog for this um, for this type of uh, uh, website would be really really beneficial, um, especially because it's a it's a fun product. It's something that people would share. Um, you can perhaps. Uh, um, create a, a follower base on your blog based on you know people's um, interests. So um, I guess blog would be the first thing that I would that I would implement if this was uh, uh, if this was my website. Um, another thing, pro tip. Why am I saying this? Because the the main problem with this website, I'm not I'm not seeing um, a problem when I search for uh, when I search for wind chimes, for example. Just share my screen again. When I search for wind chimes, um, I'm seeing Wikipedia. I'm seeing a competitor, eBay. I've I've seen a very little difference in the quality of this site and that site. Even in fact, I even prefer your site because this one just sort of looks a little bit. A little bit all over the place. The description is good, but once you arrive on it, you're kind of lost. So I, I in fact, prefer your site uh, to this one. But this one seems does seem to be a little bit stronger. I mean, um, speaking about PageRank, PageRank is not a, you know an absolute measure of uh, quality of the site, but they do have a little bit of a stronger PageRank, which which seems that they're getting uh, maybe not more links, but maybe uh, you know higher quality links um, pointing into the into their website. And this is what I'm talking about. Um, uh, running a blog, because um, having a blog will allow you to generate all this fun content that's actually link worthy, and you'll be earning a lot more links towards your towards your domain. Um, and combining a blog would mean that combining blog with social media means you can also do outreach. So you can uh, broadcast your content via social media channels. I, I see that you're already um, running a pretty successful Facebook campaign, which is nice. Perhaps introduce Google Plus and Twitter as well. Diversify. I would also consider because the product is quite visual. Although I don't personally like Pinterest, um, I think it's an opportunity for you as well. I'm not sure if you're doing that already. Um, and one thing I was going to suggest to you to get great links, invite others to write for you. Um, that might not click straight away that you actually get links by others writing for you. Um, but what happens if 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 you invite guest authors to write for your blog? And these these uh, guys likely have their own blog or you know their social media profiles. And if they've written, if they authored something, they'd be willing to share that content for you. Basically, by by um, advertising their own piece of writing, they will be advertising your website and your products as well as earning links. So that's a definite recommendation for you. Um, I noticed on your website you also have a customer testimonial section. We have a, a whole bunch of people who've given positive reviews to you. I would probably um, you know, re-engage with these people, see if they've got uh, blogs, see if they are 
uh, would like to perhaps uh, write a re uh, review on their blog, um, just in investigate those relationships between you and the people who have uh, purchased uh, with you in the past. I noticed uh, also on your website you have the little environment friendly icon. Um, there is plenty of uh, government run and uh, um, other sort of niche directories and, and portals that deal with environment friendly products. Perhaps this is a great place for you to start earning links. You know, engage with the um, green and eco friendly, environment friendly communities and um, try to maybe submit some content to them and uh, uh, get some links that way to, towards your website. Um, I've noticed, uh, I can't really ask you because I don't think you're in a hangout, but um, I see that uh, the uh, tea tree gallery .com .au website, you're linking out to them. So obviously there's some sort of business relationship there or you just decided to endorse because the, they, those guys are great. The question I have for you, are they linking to you? Perhaps you can give them a piece of content that describes your business or maybe a testimonial or uh, since you've already linked to them, there was, there was probably a reason you probably like those guys. So I would probably uh, give them a piece of content um, and maybe earn a link that way. Um, another one is um, you, you have this um, website linking um, to you use nature endorsement. And on this one, I think I might actually show this one on the screen. Okay, so this is the page. No, it's not because it's got a bullet point in it. Okay, here's the page. It looks a little bit, f I mean, colors are screaming at me. It's a bit of an old school site, but nevertheless, you're getting a, um, you're getting a link from them. Um, you know, uh, it says website and it clicks through to you. And um, Wind Chimes Australia is actually linked to um, a further uh, page to here. Now, in your ideal situation, um, I guess you would use Wind Chimes Australia as the text in the link to link to, through to your website um, and has an opportunity for you as well. So you've got a little page, this is you mentioned there. Um, everything is great, but you've got please visit our website. I can't click on this, this is not a link. That's pretty lame. Um, and this thing here, your website is written down, but it's not linked. So I would use, I would not link this, please visit, visit our website. I would link Wind Chimes Australia because uh, you actually have a nice keyword in the in the domain, or you, I would use my brand name, um, Wind Chimes Australia, and I would link that to my site. Okay, cool. Um, so I don't know if I've got any more pointers. Oh yeah, I've I found a, a weird link, I guess. Um, Tony made a funny uh, funny remark that I'm remarketing to myself. Excellent. <laughs> Um, okay, so this link here, this is a little bit weird. So it's a box gutter joiner. It's a business in Australia, um, which has nothing, nothing really to do with um, uh, wind chimes because uh, they do box gutters. You know, it's a pretty. Uh, Pretty different industry, and I'm and I'm seeing here. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. I'm seeing also a bunch of links. These are looking, you know, not spammy, but kind of like borderline manipulative. I'm seeing uh, somebody did uh, SEO there, and all of a sudden you got a Wind Chimes Australia link. That just seems a little bit weird. It's not too bad. I don't think this type of stuff will penalize you, but try not to repeat this on a mass scale because this would look suspicious to somebody from Google's web spam team. Um, so my main piece of advice to you is try to earn some links, engage with social media and um, engage with the blogosphere uh, because as you can see, where is the keyword difficulty tool? Okay, here I just want to run a quick uh, popularity for different websites. Uh, we've, we've got Wikipedia, you know, Wikipedia is always uh, right at the top um, if you search for wind chime because informa in information type query as well. Um, we've got your competitors, eBay and Wind Chimes Australia. Um, eBay is there because of the sheer authority of the domain, but uh, as you can see, the page authority between you and your competitor is not that great. So you've got the equal number of pay, um, root domains linking into your sites. Um, except 
that um, their domain authority seems to be a little bit higher than um, yours, just by two points. This is not Google's data, this is just sort of something comparable, um, but it does speak that they might have a nudge higher quality than you. What this means is that you literally have like maybe a few, few link, you're perhaps few links away from winning this spot here, which is really great news. So all you have to do is start that, start that blog, start engaging more on social media and, uh, and maybe do some, uh, perhaps uh, do some guest blogging, right, for some reputable websites. Um, so that's the comparison with your competitors. All I could find out about your links is that you have only a handful. So basically 10 linking root domains. Um, so there's literally 10 websites linking to you. Um, and I was surprised, I'm seeing a lot of like weird directories and I'm not seeing your usual normal Australian directories. What about Hot Frog? What about True Local? You know, try to submit to those normal places where you should be as a business owner. Um, some of these are, you know, okay, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It doesn't look like you're manipulating architects because you're using Wind Chimes Australia there, so that's all good. I would just, I would just look at, you know, the number of links pointing to your website, work on that a little bit, and I think you should be sweet. All right, that's all I've got uh, for this segment. I think we've got. Uh, 15 or 10 minutes or so for the next one. So I'll hand it over to uh, Martin, who can continue on with, the, with our third website. Thanks, Dan. So the third website we're going to look at today is businessagecenter.com.au. And uh, there it is on your screen now. Now, this website, I have a little bit of uh, late mail with this one. Um, I've got a little bit of inside knowledge. They recently moved to this website from a, a different domain. So it's it's similar to uh, Nicholas's website we looked at earlier, but Nicholas changed his uh, design while this is actually moved from a different uh, URL to the businessaidcenter.com.au. So let's quickly take a look at the old website, uh, which is governmentgrantsaustralia.org. And we can see that the website is still online. Uh, we're still able to access the website, uh, albeit just a, a single page. Uh, all of these links do point across to the new domain. Uh, one thing of note though, I'll introduce a little plugin I've got here. It's uh, called the Canonical URL plugin. It uh, gives me this little icon uh, as soon as a Canonical tag is discovered on the page and as soon as that uh, URL specified in the Canonical tag doesn't match the one that's in your address bar. It's an extremely handy little, uh, little tool. And uh, we can see here that the, the old website does canonicalize towards the new one, which is good. We're not going to have duplication issues when it comes to the content, but at the same time, it's, it's certainly not ideal because we're essentially not transferring the, the value. We're not fully transferring the value across from that old website. Okay, so uh, we'll take a quick look at uh, what's indexed for the old domain. And uh, as you can see, there, there aren't too many pages left over. There's 58 results. Uh, some of them are on a subdomain, uh, members.governmentgrantsaustralia.org. If that's something that's not used, then you can probably just turn that off. Uh, but for the rest of the, uh, the pages here, um, realistically, what we want to do is a 301 redirect across to the equivalent page on the new domain. So if you're running uh, if you're running Apache, it'll just be a matter of adding a couple of lines to your HD access file. Uh, so if you're to access the, the robots file, for example, it'll take you straight across the robots file on the new domain. When you're doing that redirect uh, for users and for search engines, you're going to get redirected to the, uh, to the new URL. Um, so you're not going to be able to see those those split versions, and and more importantly, you're going to have more of that uh, that value transferred across towards the the new website. So because there's only a canonical tag in place at the moment, you're not seeing uh, we're not we're not seeing the I suppose full impact of the content that is on this website. If we take uh, just a paragraph here and we do a quick search for it we can see that the website doesn't come up, uh, ignoring the fact that it's rewritten my search query. Uh, but it's a similar story for, for other pages on the website. 
unless we're doing a exact match search, so we're adding quotes to the uh, beginning and end of the string, we're not able to find that content. So Google doesn't fully trust the, the new website as of yet. Uh, so to do that, we want to really complete that uh, that move process, that, that domain change. Um, so the process for doing that is adding that 301 redirect from the old domain to the new. Uh, you'll want to go into Webmaster Tools as well and submit a change of request. So to do that, you just need to add both versions of the website, so verify access to both versions of the website and uh, submit that, that re-inclusion, oh, not the re-inclusion, my apologies, uh, submit that change of address from the uh, from the old domain. Essentially, you're just going to confirm to Google that, yes, the website is redirecting to the new one. I want all of the value to go here. Okay, so let's take a look at the website again. Now, one thing that I did notice, and I mentioned this earlier with Nicholas's website, is there are quite a few uh, headings on the page. Uh, this plugin here is the SEO Site Tools plugin. Um, essentially, what it's going to do is it's going to tell me uh, very quickly and easily how many headings, among other things, are on the page. Uh, so we can see there's one H1 tag on the page. Assistance is available for your small businesses. It's not too bad. Uh, and then we've got five H2s, and then we've got a lot of H3 tags. So as I mentioned earlier, what you want to try and do is use the heading tags simply to mark up the, the content on the page, ensuring that it's, it's relevant towards the, the central theme of that page. Uh, at the moment, we've got uh, heading tags on all the elements of navigation. And when you're, when you're talking about things like uh, contacting an advisor, uh, the grants and fundings here aren't too bad, but uh, when you're talking about asking questions in polls, perhaps it's not as relevant. Uh, and what you'd want to try and do is just have the the topic of the website as, as consistent as possible. So you're really giving a clear message what the page is about. Okay, let's jump across to uh, another page on the website. So we've got uh, the small business grants uh, page on the website. I'll just open up a little plugin. Uh, Dan mentioned earlier a, uh, a tool to preview what the search result is going to look like and there's a, a link to the website uh, which you can uh, do that in the in the browser. We also have a plugin that's a little more useful uh, for Chrome. What it'll do is it'll pull the current uh, title and description of that page and it'll let you manipulate it on the screen so it's going to be a lot easier to use. There's less copy and pasting, getting all those information or getting all those uh, descriptions in place. Uh, so extremely useful tool. I, I recommend you uh, you take a look at it. So what we can see on on this page is we've got our um, title and our uh, description. The admitted description here is pulled straight from the content of the page. Um, perhaps it's not even pulled from the content of the page. It seems to be a little different, but you can see it it's it cuts off at the uh, the end of the paragraph here. So it's not necessarily ideal. I'd I'd say what's happening is the SEO plugin being used on this WordPress website is just pulling some content, pulling as, as much as it needs, and then just cutting it off. So as I mentioned earlier, what you want to do, uh, particularly on pages where you're expecting search traffic or you're expecting some social shares, is just to write a, uh, a description that compels people to, to click through to the website. So in, in this particular scenario, I'd, I'd look at including, uh, I suppose, what the main uh, focus of the website is, and that's to help the uh, business owners or the small business owners get that funding and uh, perhaps the the most compelling thing is uh, making it clear that it's an obligation free uh, assistance um, well I, I suppose you would need to, to check what the the business guidelines are but just being able to um, yeah introduce what the page is about so this is talking about the small business grants and you could have a description along the lines of you know, get uh, advice on obtaining small business grants from the Australian government, uh, contact us today, and perhaps a phone number as well, uh, which is what's included on the homepage. I'll just jump across to a, another page on the website. Uh, it's linked to from the navigation here as low interest loans. We've got two headings on the page. So we've got low interest loans for business owners in Australia. And we've also got why does the government provide low interest business loans to business owners in Australia. Two different headings, not quite on the same topic, but uh, varying, uh, varying a little bit. And then we've got that second description as our uh, title for the page. So what I'd, uh, what I'd recommend is trying to keep uh, that information consistent. Uh, when you're dealing with internal navigation, uh, 
you can link to the content with low interest loans because that's what it, what it is going to cover. But you also need to think about what people searching for the page are going to uh, be typing into Google or what they, uh, what they might be looking for through the, the social channels. And you want to make sure that the information you're, you're putting into that title and description is, is going to be relevant so you know what you're looking at when you, when you land onto the page. So if, if the title was just going to be low interest loans, for example, it doesn't really specify what type of loan it is. Uh, you could have someone looking for a car loan, for example, landing on this page and, and finding out it's, it's not relevant at all. So you'd want to um, find the balance between those different aspects to, uh, to tailor your, your title uh, to what's, what's going to be most appropriate for, for the different types of users uh, and, and keeping it consistent as well. So just going back to the uh, the topic of the two headings, uh, you'd want to avoid um, having the two H1s. Each page should only have one, um, essentially summarizing what that page is about. Um, I believe the first one above the uh, the image is automatically generated, while the second one has been included as part of the content. So there might need to be a, a bit of a process going through to update those uh, those pages manually. Okay, while we're on this page, uh, let's just take a look at the calls to action on this website. So on the right-hand side, we've got a, a couple of things here. We've got the Programs and Grant Finder, and we've got a big, uh, a big image here saying click here. Now, when someone's scanning through the website, uh, they perhaps won't read the text that's associated with it, and they might not even read the heading there. As they're scanning through the website, they're going to see click here, and click here is not going to mean anything to them, so they might just move on. So what you uh, what you might want to do is reword that to something that, that's going to be a little more appropriate. So looking at it at a glance, if it said Grant Finder, uh, instantly you know what you're going to find on that next page. So that might encourage people to go through that page um, to, to use that, that Finder service. We've also got the Contact and, and Advisor um, section. When it comes to these um, small contact forms, uh, I like it to be as, as brief as possible and not requiring or uh, requiring the, the least amount of information as possible. So if this form is not too bad, um, perhaps first name and last name could be combined into a single form so there's a little less work for that user. Uh, perhaps uh, you know, phone and mobile phone, just, just ask for one. You, you probably don't need both. If you do need to get uh, more details, you can always ask under the, uh, over the phone. Uh, and, and I suppose the other thing is, uh, just going back to that unique selling point, uh, if it's an obligation-free quote, just have, have something reassuring there for that user. So I don't want to feel that if, if I speak to you, I'm, I'm going to be obliged to then use your services if, if it's not going to be suitable for my needs. So something, something just to, to reassure, I suppose, the, uh, the user also to help with that little nudge to, to get them to fill out their details to, to make contact uh, would definitely be... Uh, ideal. On some pages as well, we have a, another contact form. This could just be a, uh, a bug in moving to the new website, I'm, I'm not too sure, but um, there's, there's no title, there's, I'm not really sure what it's, what it's doing here, so perhaps I can be removed as there is another one. Uh, and we've also on the left hand side got uh, a telephone number that's a little hard to read and uh, another form as well. So. I, I don't think the uh, the approach of having multiple uh, contact forms will increase the number of leads that you receive, but um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably recommend just uh, removing that to, to keep it a, a little cleaner than it currently is. Okay, and the last uh, last page we're going to look at is uh, a specific uh, type of. Uh, funding or a specific type of grant that's available. So on the left hand side we've got a list of all of those grants that the people are looking for. And if we just use this little plugin again we can see, uh, well first of all we still have the old branding uh, from the old website name uh, in that title. Uh, while I suppose it is a little bit relevant, you probably do want to try and keep it uh, consistent across the website. So if you've changed your branding to business, uh, to business aid center, uh, it's worth keeping that consistent. Uh, the other thing is in the title here, we've got the construction industry training funds. Uh, perhaps that could be uh, reworded uh, to include uh, grants as well, and a little bit of keyword research should be done just, just to see what people are, are actually looking for. Um, 
and of course the the meta description once again it, it seems to have just taken content from the body of the page and it's, it's not all that compelling uh, if, if Google doesn't like what you've specified it's probably going to pull this uh, bit of content anyway so it doesn't hurt to try and, and produce something a little more uh, beneficial so one suggestion that I have uh, to, to try and roll it out across multiple pages is to use a, uh, a plugin that will allow you to specify a, a template. And one of those plugins uh, for WordPress is the WordPress SEO by Yoast. And essentially what you can do is for each type of page uh, or each, each type of um, uh, page uh, post, uh, media and a couple of other um, types of pages is actually specify what that meta description is going to be uh, before giving you the option to override it. So on a specific page or a specific post, if you override or if you mainly enter a title or description, it'll use that. But if it doesn't, you can actually specify what it's going to uh, include there. Uh, I imagine at the at the moment it's just going to be an excerpt of the the content of that post or of that page. But what you could do is try and build a, a templated uh, meta description that's going to be beneficial. So for these uh, for these different types of grants, that could be uh, get obligation free information on obtaining the and then insert the variable for the name of that page. So the construction industry training funds um, grant from Business Aid Center call us today and then include the phone number, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and, and that'll offer a, a more beneficial uh, title for the user without the need to manually go through uh, each one of those pages to, to specify a, a meta description. It's not going to work in all cases. Uh, you're not always going to be offering a grant or uh, it's, it's not going to be appropriate to have that meta description, but it's a step forward. Um, and ideally you'll be able to write a, a meta description for each page and a title for each page. Um, okay, there are, there are a couple of things that I did want to uh, look at on this website, but uh, just due to time constraints, we weren't able to, to look at it. Um, but there is a little bit more information that we're gonna reach out uh, to the website owners with um, just to help them move forward with that website. So completing the transition from the old uh, domain to the new is, is gonna be key. And then just improving these on-site elements is going to go a long way to, um, to to getting the website ranking a little better than it currently is. Okay, so uh, so that's it from me. Uh, I suppose we'll uh, throw it back to Dan and open it up to any questions or comments or feedbacks from the, the members of the Hangout today. Okay, um, I think uh, we had some um, people in the audience or in the in the chat in the Hangout uh, who wanted to contribute. I think Tony was one of them. So um, I'll uh, hand it over to him and see if uh, he has any useful uh, feedback and tips for the websites we reviewed. Cheers, Dan. Uh, I, uh, I, as you saw a comment on the side there, uh, I, I ran a crawler on uh, Nicholas's website and I noticed that uh, all his images were 404 ing on me. And uh, so I looked into that uh, and found that if I looked at them in the browser, they were fine, 200 OK. Uh, so what I'm suspecting is looking at images. Um, maybe the solution is to uh, do a Fetch's Google bot and see what Google sees. Uh, How does the site command in the Google Images tab work? Does it, does it return images? Uh, that's no idea. Okay, Martin, Martin, give it a shot and let us know how that goes. Um, yeah, I've I've seen a case where somebody has actually um, uh, blocked uh, robots from indexing their images entirely, and it was a very visual product. I think it was like phone covers. Um, so none of their in, uh, images were actually indexed. If you do site site colon website address. Um, and you switch to Google Images, it would show no results. I'm just wondering if that's the case here. Yeah, so when we do a... Uh, also, it's uh, JavaScript files and... Uh, yeah, JavaScript and all images are blocked. 
Yeah, so when we do a, uh, a site colon search for nicholasburge.com.au uh, and, and specify images, they do appear. So the other thought that I had is perhaps there's some um, hotlink protection turned on uh, in the in the control panel, and that's blocking these uh, attempts to, to download the images. That makes good sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rob, did you have a comment or feedback or something you wanted to share with us? Well, I, I noticed uh, an, an error coming up on uh, the last site uh, every time I tried to open it. And after I clicked it, uh, some guy tells me I can get uh, grants. <laughs> and it took me a while to find where I could shut him off because he was talking all the time. Ah, oh, right. One of those uh, talking people, yep. Yeah, and it, it's it's not uh, uh, the 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 video is not above the fold, but quite far below. So you don't know where the sound is coming from. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. That can be uh, that can be a little bit annoying. That's good feedback. Yeah. Um, cool. Um, did anyone else uh, have any uh, um, comments before we wrap up? I think we're again over an hour. It's supposed to go for sixty minutes, and we go a little bit over, a little bit over. Okay. If there are no any um, additional comments and feedback or questions, uh, we will wrap it up here. Um, and um, don't forget to join us. Um, join us next week. Uh, we always run this at the same time, so you can uh, join us. It's uh, Thursday, 7 p.m. p.m. Australian time, and uh, whatever it is, uh, your time where you are now. Um, so, and for those who um, are just watching. This is the page that you should follow, plus uh, google.com and then plus design SEO. Follow this page for your invitation and um, when we publish the event page, you can RSVP to that and uh, make sure you join us next time. All right, um, that's all for now. I will end the broadcast now. Thanks everyone who's uh, viewing the Hangout now. I see we've had between you know, 20, 30 people, which is great to see. Um, and looking forward to seeing you all next week.